How's it going, Shore Kings? It is week six. We are three and one, and we have a nice little home game here against an 0-4 Louisiana Tech. This game will be our CUSA conference opener, and we can see that Herb Street's gonna be in our corner, as he probably should be. We're three and one. Sure, our overall is lower than Louisiana Tech's, but we have put up some good fights against good teams. So uh, a team that's relatively mediocre, we should be able to do okay against. Keys for the game here are definitely going to be limit our turnovers and try to run the ball. If we can manage to do those things, I think we'll be okay. I'm really hoping that we can make this kind of a blowout win. You can see three-point win against Air Force, overtime win against Western Arizona, nine-point win against Kansas State, and an overtime loss against TCU, who's now ranked, so that makes us look pretty good. While Louisiana Tech has lost to a okay Virginia, a pretty good Western Michigan, a pretty good UNLV, and a meh Louisiana Lafayette. In the recruiting game, Jorge Britton and Tony Burgess are going to commit elsewhere. And Adrian Stewart is going to lock us out. So we got to fill three little spots here. With that done, we're going to go ahead and just start putting points into guys that we're the furthest behind on. Try to hold on to any players that we can get because it's not going to be easy. And we can schedule these four visits. Um, guys that we're behind on, I think that we got to try to go relatively early. You can see Penn State's getting 700 points here with David Pope, which is bad news for us. We're going to go against uh, FAU, though. They're number 10, so we'll get some potentially more bonus points on that if we beat them. And with John Minor, it's kind of a similar situation. I feel like getting in before Georgia and trying to close that gap is our best option. And we want to avoid... Uh, competitive visit. So with Chris Brown, this corner, we're actually going to send him to this Louisiana Tech game. And Kyle Arnold will also go to FAU. So that FAU game is going to be uh, a very important one for the Dwarves. A quick look at recruiting classes just to see who's doing what. Oklahoma already has two five stars. Uh, they're sitting with the number two class. Tamu with the number one. Michigan, Bama, LSU rounding out the top five. I mean, this is... Uh, you know, not too unexpected. There's a lot of Southern teams here. And a quick look at the top 10. Uh, North Carolina jumped up a few spots to number one. Oklahoma sitting at two. Ohio State three. Texas four. Washington, unfortunately, is at five. And then UCLA. So pretty good spread in terms of uh, conferences. Clemson, Nebraska, Michigan State, and then Florida Atlantic. Um, and we just got to hope that Florida Atlantic can continue to win until we play them. We really want them to be as highly ranked as possible because I think we should have a decent shot. They're 84 overall. That puts them at about a B and we've, you know, we hung on to teams with an A rating. Kind of an interesting look here with the Heisman. Baker Mayfield's made it on <laughs> his final year possible here with Oklahoma. Uh, Malik Zaire. I think that's how you say it out of uh, Notre Dame leading the way right now. You got Raleigh Williams, the third at Arkansas. Soso Jamabo. That's I don't. That's a one hell of a name uh, running back out of UCLA. And then uh, Deonta Foreman out of Texas. Our current rank, even after that loss, is sitting at 30. So if we continue to win, we should have a chance to get into the top 25. Obviously, they're not too high on us next year. And I don't know how exactly we're going to go. Um, up from where we're at with the recruiting classes that we're signing, but we'll give it a good shot. And we currently have the 20th most difficult stadium to play, and we haven't lost at home. 7-0 and right now with a nice 42,000 uh, average attendance, A- minus grade on the toughest places to play. The mine is uh, could be where teams go to die, and you know we'll have our first real test, I think, at home when that Florida Atlantic game happens. But it's Louisiana Tech on our minds this week they're a 77 overall so no shaky bars anywhere and i'm feeling relatively confident going into this game louisiana tech as we look at the numbers has a pretty mediocre offense statistically and an even worse defense um and we're i don't know decent on offense i guess by the numbers we we don't we can't run the ball very well and we don't pick up many yards but we do a decent job getting points and throwing the ball and then our defense should be better than ours um, the Bulldogs also have a corner out with a broken tailbone and a left end out with a broken tailbone. So maybe we're able to, uh, 
attacked those positions and who knows maybe we can throw well and with a left end being out maybe we're going to be able to actually run in this game their top players are a kicker which we just discount right away and then an 87 overall wide receiver and an 87 overall left end which means that the left end that's injured is most likely the backup anyways chris brown is visiting three star corner i don't know how exactly we're going to get these two recruit goals but four swatted passes and two interceptions we're going to do our best to make that happen Oh, it feels so good to be back in the mine, especially getting to play a bad Bulldogs team. I really do feel pretty confident here. Stands are pretty much full. And on the coin toss, they'll choose tails and win it. So I think we got to see what our offense can do right off the bat. Uh, 12 mile an hour wins. And it'll be G Nunez back to return. Uh, oh, wow. Their kicker got a hold of that one. If their kicker isn't going to allow Gene to return anything this game... It could be pretty devastating uh, as G Nunez returns are like the biggest part of this team's ability to score points. Irby gets a good seven yards on the read option on first down. Second and three, we're gonna hand the ball off to him again and we got some good blocking. So already starting to be able to run. We'll just see if we can maintain this efficiency. As well, I'm going to be uh, scrambling Richie in this game quite a bit. I'm going to make sure that we avoid taking too many hits. But it's felt just kind of like we've taken, uh, you know, a lot of hits with Richie and we've seen some minor injuries. I don't want it, you know, I don't want to risk something major. If we can manage to uh, win this game handily, I'm going to feel real good about it. It's been a while since we've had a nice easy win with this team. The more we run, the more pressure I think we're going to start seeing as we find Howard Flanagan for another first down. And hopefully that opens up our passing game so Richie can be afforded the ability to make a couple mistakes running still here gosh it really does feel like we get off the line slow but offensive line doing a great job so far i want to try to be safe throwing the ball here inside the red zone because we haven't been great and i should have slid down there richie thankfully holds on and gets to the one yard line any coaching staff that we come up against should absolutely know that the quarterback sneak is coming there but uh, the bulldog's unable to get it stopped Richie's in for the touchdown and very quickly we, we're gonna take that seven nothing lead four swatted passes and two interceptions were the goals that we need for Chris Brown the recruits and that's not gonna help if Price Wilson's throwing those away on second down they're gonna go play action and Benjamin was there early but gave up a little bit and so they'll have a third and short and so we've got to play against another one of these hurry up teams third and two they're gonna go to the air. Decent coverage except for on the man who came out of the backfield and they just get enough for the first down. It does seem to be pretty good news. Oh, I thought I had a chance to get that one. Does seem to be pretty good news that they're passing a lot though. Quarterback kind of got stuck there. Again, in a decent position, but unable to get my hands on the ball. Good tackle that time from Marks. Third and five. They're going with the screen. I was really late to react to it. And they got enough for the first down. New set of downs. They go to the air again. And quarterback scrambled. He just hurtled in the pocket. Uh, broke a tackle and got eight yards. Really hoping we can kind of bait them into something. They're going to try to run. And Frederick's not going to allow a whole lot. So another third and short here. On that third down, nothing doing. We're going to hold the Bulldogs to a field goal attempt. So a little bend but don't break forces them to settle for three points and we'll maintain our lead and get the ball back as well. Trying to continue to run. We had so much success that first drive and we're going to continue to see it right now. Third and two, pretty deep in our own territory. We're going to try the read option to pick up the first down and Richie's got it in a little bit more. And that play will bring us to the end of the first quarter. So 
As we head into the second, we've got a nice four point lead here with control of the ball. You know, that highlight that they just showed is pretty nice. A couple of Richie runs, but I do not want him getting injured. First play of the second quarter. I'm going to get outside the pocket. Try to throw back. We have McMillan. And somehow we get nine yards out of that play. A little bit of passing should open up some running lanes. And Tlaib getting five more. This could end up being a career rushing day for our running backs as Tlaib gets free for another nine. We're up to 76 as a team right now. Third and three. We're in four down territory. So I'm not too worried about just throwing one up here and whew, Richie taking a shot, but we got rid of it in time. And on fourth down, my right bumper's there, but I'm going to try to scramble. Richie didn't get it. Oh, maybe if I dove. So some bad decision making from me leads to the turnover on downs and they're going to go to the air. Oh, I was so close to that one, but instead it's a good first down. Hoping here that the defense is able to hold these guys. It's up to... Oh my gosh, what a whiff. It was up to Lester to stop the touchdown, and I just completely missed. That's embarrassing. <laughs> the running has worked pretty well. That doesn't mean I don't want to be able to pass, and... Oh, that's a forced throw, but McMillan came down with it. Irby on the draw. Just too slow, but that should be a face mask, so... We get bailed out by the defense on that one. Penalty moves us towards midfield, and somehow I fit that one in there to Donald. So we're across the 50 with three minutes to go, and wow, that linebacker was untouched. Third and nine, their coverage has been really good all game long, and I couldn't get that one off. I think I might have had Khalif, but just fourth and nine now, we're, we're in a tough spot. It might be a tough spot, but I'm still going to go for it. They're bringing some pressure. Khalif is wide open, but the pass was inaccurate, and somehow it goes to Howard Flanagan. I did not even try to throw that one to Howard, but he just miraculously came open, and the ball was so poorly thrown. It goes right to him. Live by the Richie Kirk inaccuracy. Die by the Richie Kirk inaccuracy. And we've got two minutes to go here. Supposedly, Richie is on fire right now. Uh, so let's just scramble here. They, they're going to leave me that much, much room. I'm going to take it. And with 208 now, we're inside the 20. Now, I do think that your quarterback being on fire and stuff helps them with their throwing. So we want to hope that he can keep this up. Try to run the ball inside the 10. Line collapses. We still get a yard out of it, though. Third and five. Uh-oh. We got a man open. Carpenter has it. And muscles his way into the end zone. That was a, a tough drive. But we fight down the field and end up with the touchdown. So we'll get a four-point lead back with a minute to go before halftime. We have struggled a little bit on defense. As these guys are going to be going down to try and take the lead before halftime. And my hope is I get stuck on Deontay Alford is that we can just make some plays. Wow, that's a nice catch from Marlon Watts. First and 10. I'm looking for a lot of, like, out routes. Here's a screen. And they're going to have to take a timeout, I think, there. Second and eight now. Pretty important that we do a decent job with the coverage here as we just give up a wide open pass over the middle. And they're inside the red zone. One timeout left, 46 seconds. The zone is getting picked apart right now, so we're going to go ahead and try the man. I just whiffed in the backfield. Wow, broken tackles for Jared Kraft. He's in for the touchdown. So hoping now for a good return from Nunez as it will be returnable. 41 seconds in all our timeouts. If we could manage to do something, that'd be great, or if we could just get obliterated. Long ways to go now. You know, I would take a tie ball game at the half as I'm just going to be scrambling. And, dude, this spy has got me covered. But we find G. Nunez leaking out, getting out of bounds. You got to be a little bit flattered if you're Richie seeing that uh, spy as we'll give it to McMillan and take our first time out here. And I'm actually a little bit upset that... Uh... Oh, Khalif! Oh, you got to break that tackle. I was going to say I'm a little bit upset that we're having trouble... Uh doing things oh man take a sack there we gotta take a timeout 
I haven't had the opportunity to get the thought off my mind. I've been trying to say I'm upset that we haven't been able to attack these guys downfield very well. And we're just going to throw this one up and see if Khalif can get there. He's got to step on his man, Khalif. You die for that one and maybe you have it. Oh, that one hurts. Third and 18. We still have time, perhaps, to have something happen. We're throwing it up for Khalif again. He comes down with it and he's into the end zone. Khalif James with a huge play. Three seconds to go in the half and we will retake the lead. The five foot nine receiver absolutely got up there and mossed his man. Gives us the lead. We kick that off so that they're forced to return it. Burns the last three seconds of the half away. And as we head into the locker rooms here at the mine, 21 17. Remember, we are undefeated at home, trying to get to 8 0. And so far, this halftime has been one of big plays. And I just hope that our defense can kind of limit Louisiana Tech here in this second half. We held them to a field goal on that opening drive, but haven't really been able to do anything since. Missed plays, missed tackles have allowed Louisiana Tech to score pretty easily. Remember our recruit goal is I just got absolutely pancaked. Our recruit goal is uh, four spots and two picks, and we have none of that so far. We'll continue to try the man defense as the quarterback has all the time in the world. This could be our first swat. Well, we get the pass breakup, but we needed to get up there and get a hand on the ball before it got to the receiver. Third and three. I was expecting the run. There it is. Frederick stands up as man. A little glitchy there on the tackle, but I guess they got the first down. Kraft has been having a solid amount of success so far on the ground and their quarterback doing a pretty good job here through the air. Bryce Wilson definitely getting it done. He's got all the time in the world to throw here and that's just a bad, inaccurate one. It would have counted as a deflection if it was in bounds, so that kind of hurts. So far, I gotta say, I've been relatively impressed with our uh, man coverage here. I just screwed up the, uh, the screen though. Uh, I gotta get to those. Curious to see what they're gonna throw at us here on third and five. It'll be another pass. I'm going to try and help cover and... Dang, 15 yards is not good. Second 11. They're going to the air again. And there's a sack. Fantastic job. It's third and long. Bulldogs here have only failed to convert on third down once. As... Oh, I just got beat, but we get another sack. Is that Keon Wilcox perchance back to back? I think it was actually Lawrence Young back-to-back, -back, so my apologies to the uh, defense event. Fourth and 26, they're going to boot this one away, and that was not a good punt, so we get the ball at the 25-yard line, I think. Even better news, it's at the 27, and we'll try to open up this drive with our little read option. Again, sliding down to avoid taking any hits with uh, Richie here. Richie's had a good game so far, so I would hate to see it at all diminished. By, uh, by an injury, and we're just continuing somehow to run the ball. One of our keys to the game. Louisiana Tech uh, playing pretty deep in the safety department. We'll just find McMillan for a short little dump off there. I think that we're going to have one of Gene or Khalif on the one-on-one -on -one here. Actually, I need to just scramble. They've got a spy. Richie thankfully doesn't fumble, and we've got a third and manageable. Every once in a while, I'll have a play where I just don't feel at all comfortable. And I did feel comfortable on that play action. Kevin McMillan doing a pretty good job. That last catch was McMillan's seventh of the game as we're just going to try to scramble. Oh, no. Oh, Lordy. Pretty big play here. We're going to go play action and took the dump off to Gene, but it's not enough. So fourth and six, we're going to go for this. Just like before, we're definitely not in field goal range as I'm just going to get outside the pocket. A's open. <gasps> I stepped over the line of scrimmage. So it's our second turnover on downs. He was wide open, but <laughs> oh no, what a big mistake. Well, the defense has made a couple stops so far. We're going to need to see another is the problem. And uh, this quarterback just throws it away when he's in trouble, which is bad news for me. I need him to start making some mistakes. All in all, we've made a pretty solid adjustment with this uh, man coverage. And on second and 10, 
Quarterback's going to scramble, and he got sacked technically. So it's our third sack of the game, and it's third and long for the Bulldogs. It's one of the biggest benefits to having a relatively fast team is that I don't have to worry too much about the spy. They're going to the same formation here. I've left the wide receiver open, but Powell got beat on that cross route, and it's a first down for Louisiana Tech. Those third and longs are absolutely killer to give up as they're going to go deep and marks. Well, nobody went up to We technically have a deflection, but nobody went up for that one. That is just a little bit annoying. I've left my man open, but I don't think we'll give up the first down. Instead, seven yards, so third and three now. Always worried about out routes when I'm covering, and there's one. I covered it pretty well. I didn't have help, but the pressure comes, and we get another sack. Fourth and seven. The defense is doing a great job of holding. This is the final play of the third quarter. This punter just shanked it, and it bounced off of Nunez's head. Oh, my goodness, and the Bulldogs recovered it. So going into the fourth quarter, we just gave them the ball back with fantastic field position and a first down. They get it at the 14-yard line, and that is the first time, I think, ever that G. Nunez has been clutch as I, again, just over-pursue Jared Kraft, and they get an easy touchdown. So with 5.57 to go in the game, it's the offense back out on the field trying to get something done. Second and one. I see Gene. Oh, we can't get it off in time. Gene Nunez had a step on his man. Instead, we get sacked and it's third and long. Third and eight going to the air. We've got McMillan. It's, I think, his eighth catch of the day. He's got us that first down. Running on this first down line actually held pretty well. And Talib's getting a solid amount of yards when he's putting it on the ground right now. A little play action on second and two. They're not bringing a whole lot of pressure, but we throw a risky one and it can't get to McMillan. Third and two. I'm going to get outside the pocket. I'm running for my life. Terrible Bruh. throw. Oh, no. Well, they hit the ball back. Defense needs to come up big here. I got a little complacent with the accuracy that Richie has been showing so far in this game. And it bit me in the ass as I think we have to hold these guys to a field goal. First and 10. Marks. Oh, he gets a deflection. You got to get that interception, though, my guy. Second and 10. Now I'm trying to help defend the middle of the field. All the time in the world for this quarterback. He's got a man, and Rick Penn gave it up. No way Carlos Henderson got a foot in. Oh, that's killer. I think there's a good chance that we see the refs take a look at this one. They won't. And it's not worth one of our timeouts, so we unfortunately give up the touchdown, and just like that, we're down 10 with only a few minutes to play. We need an answer, and we need it quick here. Uh, trying to be patient. I got to force that one. Flanagan does the, get the catch. It's time for the hurry up. Question really is going to be who gets open for us. We find Flanagan. I didn't even want him to catch that one. He's not going to get enough yards for that to be worth it. Biggest problem right now is, besides the clock, uh, the coverage that they're showing us. Third and 10, going to the air. I'm looking for Gene. Turnaround route, he has it. He stays in bounds, or gets out of bounds, sorry, across the 50. We've got the slot out, so we can maybe abuse a little bit as Irby picks up a good one. Just over three minutes to go, third and three. And we're going right back to the same play because they don't cover it well in Irby. With a little spin move, stays on his feet. What a move there, Donald. I am in love with that move right there, and we're going to give it to him again. Can't make a move that time, though. Clock is starting to tick away, so we got to find something, and we got to find something fast. We're going to hold on, find McMillan. He stays in bounds, but he got the first down, so it'll momentarily stop the clock. So long as the defense can get the job done, there's still plenty of time here as we wait and find McMillan again. Gets the first and goal, not into the end zone though. Called the halfback dive, but I don't like it. So we're gonna try to get to the edge and Noel gets the touchdown. Oh, that was a big, big play. 11 plays, about 76 yards and a little over a minute taken off the clock as we've gotten this back to a three point game and the defense really needs to step up here as we've kept them inside the 20. Great kick coverage that time. Expecting this team to run a little bit 
As the clock's winding down, we will bring a little bit of pressure. And ooh, quarterback just threw that one away. Perfect play for us right there. Second and 10. They're going to go to the air again. Surprisingly, wide open man. Can we get the tackle? Big tackle. Third down. I won't take the timeout yet. Third and inches. We're going to bring a blitz as they've burned down the clock. But I didn't want to take the timeout yet. We get the timing right. It's an option, though. And they pitch it out. This man has all the room in the world. Thankfully, we knocked him out of bounds, though. A minute and 28 to go. It is starting to feel like all hope is lost. Sure, we get a tackle here, but we still have to get the ball back and put up a field goal just to force overtime. Second 11, it's another run. Oh my gosh, way too much room. I think we we did get the face mask. We'll take our second time out, but it's third and inches. Third and inches game on the line here. We try to get there. We do get the stop. Fourth and inches. A minute and 14 to go. They're in the punt formation with a minute and 14. We'll be in a safe zone just in case they try to fake this. And we will have a chance yet to maybe come back and win or tie up this game. And we get the touchback as well. So plenty of time to work with. We just need Richie to be real clutch here. Hopefully we're not asking for too much. I'm going to get outside the pocket and just scramble on this first play, which sucks because I didn't get the first down or out of bounds. Under a minute to go now. And it's time to start throwing bombs, I think. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take the yardage that they give me. When a field goal is still an option on the table, I've got no reason not to be scrambling. And you know what? We're, we've got a man open, McMillan. Almost in field goal range. I think maybe in field goal range. Just across the 20. It's a tough one as Richie took a shot there. But we're looking fantastic. Let Richie quickly get up to the line here. We're going to spike the ball so we have a little bit of a chance to think about what's happening here. I think at this point with 37 seconds left, a touchdown would win this the game. And again, let me get outside the pocket. Let me throw that one away. 33 seconds. G. Nunez wide open. At the 11-yard line, the mine just exploded from the crowd. First and 10, 29 seconds to go. Richie outside the pocket, has a man in the end zone. Howard Flanagan with the touchdown, the 10-yard reception in Richie Kirk's third touchdown of the game. We take the lead with 23 seconds in the fourth quarter. What a throw. The extra point makes it a four-point game. And while the Bulldogs have all three timeouts, they only have 23 seconds to work with. With the wind coming at us, they should be forced to return this one, which will bring a little bit of time off the clock. But just the fact that even a field goal isn't enough is good news. Although, ooh, that was a really good return. First and 10. They're going with a screen, surprisingly, and we'll tackle them inbound. So I think that's their first timeout with 16 seconds to go. I would go so far as to say that was terrible decision making. As I'm accidentally on Deontay Alford. And Penn doesn't quite get there, but it's out of bounds. Third and 13, 11 seconds now. And I don't care what their play call is here on third down. We're going three deep at this point. I'm not giving up something crazy, even if they get the first down, which they barely do. Five seconds to go. Final play of the game. They only have one timeout as well. And as always, I will send a defensive end back here for the Hail Mary. Clock expiring. We get the interception, which would have been nice for a recruiting goal had we already had another one. But it's game over. We survive again. Why can't we just have a good game where we dominate? Thankfully, we keep the win streak alive at the mine. It's 8-0 now for the team. But it's another close one, and it came down to Richie Kirk being clutch. Richie Kirk is the player of the game. Man, he did incredible. Uh, for how much crap I've given him you know, over the, the past few games this season, he stepped up today. Richie ends the game going 27 for 39. 343 passing yards and three touchdowns with only one pick, which is honestly pretty solid for us. A, a nice 69% completion. Running-wise, definitely our best of this season so far. Talib goes for 70 on 14 carries and a touchdown. Richie goes for 48 on 12 carries and a touchdown. And Donald, honestly, with a pretty solid 17, considering he only had five carries.
Receiving wise, we might have a new star. The redshirt freshman, Kevin McMillan, grabs it 11 times for 115 yards. No touchdowns for him, but still a nice long of 36. Nunez, five catches for 71 yards. Irby gets th four for 33. Flanagan gets four for 53 and the game winning touchdown. Khalif James, two for 62. And one of them was a 42 yard touchdown bomb. And then Damian Carpenter also grabbing one and it's a, a very useful touchdown. Defensively, Lawrence Young, Lucas Peterson and Kendrick Evans all pick up sacks and the game clinching interception by Jarvis Dodds. I, I like that. I'm feeling pretty confident right now going into conference play. As a team, we put up 478 total yards of offense and we held them to 340, so that feels good. We did have two turnovers, although one of them was just a boneheaded play by Gene to let the ball bounce off his noggin. And in probably the biggest tactical play of the day, we only had 69 kick return yards and none on the punt returns as Louisiana Tech said they would not get beaten by Gene Nunez on special teams today. By a razor's edge, Kirk and the Dwarves are relieved after a near mishap against Louisiana Tech. And you know, give credit where credit's due. Louisiana Tech played a great game. We just managed to be the more clutch team on the occasion. We had multiple dropped interceptions. Um, just uh, too many missed tackles, and they played pretty sound, but we just came out on top. And news that I'm certainly not excited to hear, David Pope, the corner, is going to go to Georgia Tech, and John Malone, the middle linebacker, is going to go to Colorado. And as a little sneak peek, we're going to be on the road at Middle Tennessee, who's 2-3 and three next week. Uh, Kirk Herbstreet's going to be in our corner, but this is a B-minus team, so they've got the edge in a lot of spots. But if we can execute... As well as we did today, I think we could be okay. I'm not expecting to be able to get as many rushing yards, but somewhere between the rushing game that we had, this game, and the TCU game, and I think that we'll be in a good spot. But that's going to do it for this week's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please feel free to subscribe if you enjoyed it and you want to see more of, you know, the dwarves or maybe the condors. And if you want to catch us live, we're over on twitch.tv slash poonmaster69 playing NCAA, playing Madden, playing some other stuff, and, and we're just going to keep growing there as well. So with that being said, my name is Poonmaster. You guys are the Short Kings, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.